Okay. So now we are live. So you can we can start. Welcome everybody to this digital financial inclusion hackathon when we try to fight poverty. The main idea of this hackathon is to help around financial inclusion. And first, I want to explain a little bit or thank you, our sponsors. The first one is the Fundación ABBL por la, por la Educación Financiera, who's started to support LTS last year and is now uh, become our second institutional sponsor. This is very important because the Luxembourg Tech School is a, is a association, it's a kind of a non-profit uh, NGO, and we try to help uh, students. Therefore, support from key institutions like ABBL is crucial, so we can not only have the necessary support financially, but we can also have the connections that can bring knowledge to our students. In this particular event, we also have partners that help us to shape the subject, basically, uh, around financial inclusion. And we have ADA, which is a Luxembourgish NGO helping uh, with microfinance and uh, around the world to small uh, ent organizations, people to, to support them, to develop them, to become autonomous. Um, AFI, which is also Alliance for Financial Inclusion, which recently established in Luxembourg and tried for sure, as, as the name of the institution, to help in financial inclusion. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and European Affairs of Luxembourg, specific uh, the Directorate, which looks into development and humanitarian affairs, uh, which is basically one of the big um, supporters of Cy Luxembourg uh, for, develop, for countries under development. And uh, last but not least, the Luxembourg House of Financial Technology, which has helped us for now many, many years, uh, five years by now, uh, running this and other hackathons around fintech and uh, many other support. So we are very grateful to to these partners today and to the love for the for the many years by now of support. Uh, I cannot forget our core, let's say, sponsors. Uh, I'm not going to name in all of them, uh, but uh, as an association, uh, we depend on, on different funding sources and uh, we have most of the key players uh, around digital development in Luxembourg supporting uh, our association. But let me explain a little bit what is the Luxembourg Tech School. Everything is started by identifying back in 2016 that there was a problem uh, in, in the market. And this is not different in other markets to find experts in, in digitalization, in technology. And, and of course, this has now extremely accelerated with COVID. Uh, but before COVID was already a huge problem. And then we identify some of the sources of the problem is that we don't have, at least in, in Europe, we don't have enough content in the high schools to promote, develop, promote knowledge and, and activities around digital, about IT, about technology. And, and these are striking figures uh, of, of two years ago when practically there is no tech content in the, in the high school. And this is why motivate us a group of, of four people um, uh, to start this, this school, this tech school to promote the development of digital leaders. And that is what we did. So our aim is to, to help uh, students around 11 to 19 years old that are basically in the high school to learn digital, to become passionate about digital and especially understand them from the business content. So it's not about coding. We do a lot of coding, but it's about what is the business context, which problems you can solve, and then the technology that you can use. And on top of that, of course, we make sure that they have a contribution to business and society. So it's not only to develop business, but also they have a responsibility to help and develop our society like this hackathon today. <clears throat> Just briefly, I'm not going to go to all the slides, but by now is a two year program. We started with one year program back in 2016. Now, five years after we have expanded uh, and this is the result basically of students asking for more, asking for more in terms of number of students. Uh, we started with 32. Now we have 220 approximately. And uh, we started with one year. Students ask for more. You know, we need more knowledge. We need more content. Basically, the program starts with creative or creativity in, in, in digital, uh, creative coding, creating thinking. 
Uh, we believe that creativity is one of the main gaps in, in our society. Um, there, you know, we, our, our kids and, and, and youngers are bombarded by so much content that they don't have to create. Everything is kind of given. So we try to invert that and, and push them to be creative. In the second year, we started with, with different domains uh, related to the economy, game development, because this is this is an incredible tool uh, to do teamwork, to play different roles. It's not only about coding, it's graphical art, it's the storyline, uh, and so on. So it's a very powerful uh, tool. And then we move into more business-oriented domains like big data analytics, uh, fintech, when we do another hackathon. And then in the second year, the students that, that, that get um, uh, really into the, this digitalization and tech, then we give it a flavor of three additional domains, uh, name, mainly space resources, which is all about robotics, uh, AI for finance, and this hackathon is part of this um, uh, module. And the last one is AI for creativity and art. So we start with creativity and we finish with creativity with the help of AI. And then we have some parallel activities, workshops on the right and on the left. We also promote uh, first job for our students. So uh, some of the coaches that were helping the other students today are actually former students of LTS, which became coaches and, and also start contributing to the society. So, in summary, we promote tech and sign uh, domains on all ages. Uh, we, we try now to start even early. We promote an open and dynamic uh, learning environment. We show to the industry the young people are just waiting for the challenge, and, and, and we demonstrate that you're going to see that today when they show the, the projects. And we also show that innovation and quality is possible at early ages. So, I hope you can also see that today. So, now let's switch to the hackathon. So, the subject is about digital financial inclusion and, and five uh, poetry. And uh, this is the first time we're doing this international. So this is this is really, really nice. Uh, we combine students from LTS with students coming from Armenia, uh, Egypt, and so on to, to hack together. So we actually had teams from, from students, at, uh, you know, from different locations, and they were together in 11 teams. And they're looking for financial inclusion solutions, allow credit, financial education, maybe saving, maybe insurance, and so on. So you will see uh, on the 11 teams. Uh, I want to always thank you, our, our coaches of LTS coaches that help us today. So thank you guys. Uh, I'm sure your, your teams are happy that you were there helping them and pushing them to, to have their quality. Uh, I'm not going to name them there. They are there. <laughs> uh, also the mentors. Uh, we do in this hackathon, we bring experts uh, from the industry to look um, each team and to advise them to challenge their idea and to help them to find what I call the diamond, what is really unique on this idea that we're spending time this weekend to develop. So many, many thanks to, to all these mentors. And the last mentors that helped this morning was also on pitch because you can have a fantastic idea, but if you cannot talk about it, you cannot explain it, it doesn't exist. So it's also important to highlight that we have mentors specifically pushing for uh, the pitch and to help on the pitch. So thank you to all, all the mentors. So a little bit the competition. So it's going to be three minutes uh, time. So after three minutes, I'm going to cut uh, the team pitch. Um, uh, one small uh, clarification for the teams. I'm going to make a small interruption when there is one minute. Very small, I'm going to say one minute. So you know exactly that you have one minute left. It will be a very short interruption, but that will help you to understand that you have one minute left. After the pitch, we switch to two minutes uh, Q&A by the jury, which I will introduce um, next. And uh, the prices that they are competing today is first prize is 1,600 euros for the team, and then 900 second place and 500 uh, first place. We will deliver certificates for all because it will be unfair. Uh, we are an education activity. We know that um, you, you, will, you will not be happy if you don't win any prize. We know, we understand that but you should all feel proud to make it up to here, to basically have built something and be able to pitch today. So can I kindly ask the jury in this order to int briefly introduce yourself, starting from Eric Bush. Eric? Eric, is you are there or you have a microphone problem? Is, is yes, go ahead. Is working. Yeah, go okay, ahead. Thanks. Hi. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, uh, hello to everybody, and uh, thanks for the whole team from LTS for organizing this. Uh, so my name is Eric Bush. I'm uh, the CEO and co-founder of uh, Nexon, which is an, uh, a tech uh, recruitment platform uh, across all of Europe. We started in Luxembourg, and uh, in general, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur in, in tech since uh, since several years. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy also to support uh, LTS and to, to be a member of this jury. Thank you, Eric. I also want to announce that Eric becomes our third uh, private investor, uh, sorry, private sponsor in LTS. And uh, we're very grateful that, uh, that you took that decision that you're supporting all our team. So thank you for that. Yeah, Next you. one is, yeah, thank you. Uh, Benedict, go to the floor. Yes, hello. Thank you, Sergio. So my name is Benedict, and I'm a program manager at ADA. ADA stands for Appui au Développement Autonome. It's a Luxembourg NGO uh, that is uh, supported by the Luxembourg Development Corporation. And as you said, Sergio, we have development projects in mainly in Central America, Africa, and Southeast Asia, trying to foster financial inclusion for the poor of this planet. I'm really excited to be on this jury and I can't wait to discover all the solutions that our amazing students have thought of. Thank you. Thank you. Hilda Mora. Thank you. Um, my name is Hilda. Uh, I am the CEO and founder of Pezesha, uh, based here in Kenya. Uh, we are basically an enabling platform as small and medium businesses across Africa uh, to be able to access affordable financial services and of course in the end um, make sure that there is meaningful financial inclusion um, that uh, allows them to be included and, and so we've built a holistic platform uh, to allow them to be included and um, you know in the end you know climb up the formal financial ladder so I'm glad to be part of the jury today. I bring um, more than 10 years of fintech experiences across Africa. I'm looking to also learn how the young people are looking to solve problems in that area. Uh, excited to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is uh, Rasha Negm. Did I pronounce correctly? Yeah. yeah, hi, I'm Rasha Negm. Uh, I'm the Assistant Sub-Governor for Fintech and Innovation at the Central Bank of Egypt. Um, we all know what central banks do. So basically what I want to say is that we are a fintech for inclusion market. So any successful product or solution that is going to come out, out of today, we have the market for it for sure. So good luck to everyone. Thank you. Last but not least, Nasir Subairi. Nasir. Hi, everyone. Sorry, um, my buttons weren't being pressed. Hi, I'm Nasser Zuberi. I am the CEO of The Loft. Um, we are a public-private foundation here in Luxembourg, supporting digitalization of the financial services um, sector. Um, as Sergio mentioned, we've been supporting the LTS almost from the beginning, its inception, uh, five years ago. Um, and uh, see the, the the work at the LTS and the team at the LTS as a core partner of the loft. Um, specifically, we're very happy to be here today supporting this uh, hackathon on financial inclusion. We've been working in the area of financial inclusion for several Uh, which Hilda is herself a uh, alumni um, uh, called Cat the Catapult Program, um, which we've been doing now for four years, which has also been very successful. And as always, very excited to see the amazing solutions that I'm sure we're going to find today from the students. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nasir, and always thank, thank you, you to thank you to your team. Uh, your team is also very very um, supportive to our work. <laughs> thank you. So um, now we're getting close to the start of the pitching. Basic evaluation is done on kind of two criteria. Uh, the first one you see on top in blue is how good is the idea and, and the level of implementation, the level of tech. Okay. So part of the evaluation is covered that. And then the second part is how good is the pitch. As I said before, you can have a very good product and solution, but if you are not able to talk about it, if you're not able to convey the message, it doesn't exist. 
So this is the running order and the teams that you are getting ready. Uh, we have 11 pitch, so stay with us <laughs> during this exciting event. And with that, we're going to get ready to start with the first team, which is Synergy. So Synergy, please share your screen. And as soon as you are ready, I start with the three minutes. So you just tell me and I start the clock. Can you see my screen? Yes, you have see your screen. You can go ahead. We're ready. Go. We are Synergy. Hello, everyone. One big problem is that female entrepreneurs all over the world in underdeveloped countries are being underrepresented. They have difficulties being exposed to potential partners and clients, and their value is underrated, especially in COVID times. So we provide a solution to that. Synergy allows for social media presence on a dedicated platform. We help expose female entrepreneurs in our companies, which leads to sales and new partnerships, and we connect them with the world. But our social media platform goes beyond just female entrepreneurs in underdeveloped countries. We also provide service to clients, celebrities, and corporations. Clients can discover the female entrepreneurs, like, connect, and follow their content, and purchase goods and services using the e-commerce integration in our app. Celebrities can get verified accounts and endorse and support these companies and engage in partnerships. And thirdly, conglomerates can support companies with commercial potential and initiate, initiate partnerships and reflect brand identity and public image. So here's a diagram that shows how these systems interact. Our female entrepreneur can sell stuff to Bogdan, for example. Bogdan can like, comment, and follow both celebrities and these female entrepreneurs and buy stuff from the female entrepreneurs. Celebrities, out of humanitarian effort, are able to um, endorse these uh, female entrepreneurs and share them. And conglomerates, when they see, wow, this female entrepreneur in, for example, um, an underrepresented uh, country is getting uh, lots of likes, lots of follows, um, they have commercial potential and they have celebrities endorsing them, but they cannot get um, their production up high enough to supply the demand, they will help them and they have a partnership, which is And so everybody uh, wins because these companies can also make money. Thank you. Um, so we have a very secure app, as you can see, with a great user interface, which works on mobile phones and computers. Um, and it's optimized for areas with less than perfect network conditions. Uh, we respect user privacy and um, our business model is that we run ads and we uh, take a processing fee on the e-commerce e transactions. So as you can see, you can chat and you can follow and you can like, and uh, there's e-commerce integration as well. So we have a website where you can read about us. It's right now, it's on the screen, our hyperlink. So you can read about us whenever you want. Thank you. We will answer questions now. Thank you. So jury panel, um, please feel free to ask questions. Yes, maybe I can start with one question. Yes, please go ahead. Um, how do you plan to get the involvement of celebrities and to have their attention as to know those female entrepreneurs and get to know them and then support them? Do you do that through social media only? Because celebrities are hard to reach, right? Well, uh, the thing is, it's a huge incentive for celebrities because celebrities want to be present everywhere to promote themselves. Now, this is a wonderful way because lots of celebrities have uh, charities. They have family offices that um, support um, good causes. And this is a great way to gain social media following, uh, public image, but also to go out there and help people in need. So I think it, it's, um, it speaks for itself that there's a huge incentive for celebrities. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other question from the jury? Uh, yes, I, I have one because you said that it's integrated with e-commerce. So basically you have a catalog for all the products that the women are going to do. So um, because I, I, 
I haven't noticed this part. So you're going, they're going to display their products and then they're going to be like a digital payment or something of that sort? That exactly. It will be like Instagram. They can tag um, a digital store to their photographs and then you can press it and you get to their online store, which is linked to their account and you can make digital transactions. Hi, this is NASA. Um, what language will this social media app be in? Um, it's um, in, it will be available in many languages, just like um, many social uh, media platforms, and there will be always be ways to communicate with each other. That won't be an issue. So you will cater for localized languages in both Asia and in Africa? Exactly, and, and um, they will be connected to businesses in their locality. So there, there will be location services and uh, language. The, 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 me the social media app will tailor around that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can move to the next thing, which is uh, Gecko Finance. Uh, start ready. I will tell you, wait a, you have to wait a couple of seconds while the jury is entering their gradings. But get ready and share your slide. Gecko Finance. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Just wait as, as, as I said. I miss Eric. Eric, I miss your input. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. The in the form. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 We need it in the form so we can move quickly to the next thing. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, okay. No, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I am doing it now. Okay. okay. So, oh. is, the, is the team ready to start? Uh, yes, yes. I'm ready. Okay. Are you ready, Eric, with the... You send the form already? Yes, no? Eric, sorry, I need the input of the first team. Okay. Yeah, got it. Okay. Great, thank you, thank you. Go ahead, team. Okay. Gecko Finance, go. Welcome to Gecko Finances, reshaping access to financial tools. Around the world, 1.7 billion people do not have access to financial services. This is due to the fact that they do not meet the typical requirements of banks. Without access to the latter, there is a minimal chance of them getting out of poverty because the cycle is created. These people should be able to access banking institutions so they can save money and manage money. The main focus should, of course, be developing countries. How do we solve this? We devise a saving system in which people set aside money from purchases. This money is accumulated and later used by the person for other purposes, such as microloans or investing in local businesses. In addition, we have, a developed, we have developed a platform for financial management and advisory, which takes the shape of an application. And now we're going to showcase this app. At the core of our project is the mobile application. It serves the purpose of managing the accumulated money and providing advice on what to do with it. After logging in, the user will see a scheduled screen, as you can tell, they can create events and set payment deadlines, which will help plan the future. There's also a total savings screen and a tab to view recent activity. The user has the possibility to connect the Fitbit, which we will get to soon. Also take further mini courses and access financial tips. Finally, they can choose to discover banks catered to low income people nearby. 
And now we'll showcase the Fitbit Companion app. Yeah, since wearable technologies are increasing in the general usage, we have created a Fitbit app. It provides a clean and straightforward overview of the user's financial situation. It also offers the main features of the phone app, namely showing savings and activities, as well as checking out banks nearby using geolocation features. Note that the banks shown will be adapted to the user's current savings. These are mostly local banks working with micro-investments. As for the sustainability of our product, One minute. The, future, the app and system may be developed uh, in countries, in developed countries. Here, people would save, but for a different purpose. The money is used for financing a world system that will convince people to use our product. The more one saves, the bigger the bonus received with using the money saved. Also, we would store money in bank, bank accounts from the company so people would benefit from interests paid to them in form of points, similar to royalty points. This way, our system is sustainable. <clears throat> Gecko Finances, reshaping access to financial tools. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Questions no from the jury? Hi, this is NASA. Very okay. nice presentation. Um, quick qu a silly question. I mean, your target audience, um, those that are financially excluded, how many of them have a smartphone and a Fitbit? Uh, well, uh, thank you, first of all, for your question. Uh, uh, well, if you, look at, if you look at it from this perspective, uh, well, uh, of course, not not many. There's a small market for uh, small uh, for people having a Fitbit, for example. But also, uh, uh, for example, the app should, would be able to deploy in uh, developed uh, in developing countries. And the, uh, uh, for, in, for the sake of time, um, in Africa, the, in the developing markets, the smartphone penetration is around thirty percent. Right, and that's going to be in higher income areas. So I just I, I do wonder whether a smartphone app is the right thing to target your market. Um, I'll, I'll maybe move on to someone well, else's question. Can, if I can access. Yeah. Okay. Yes, go ahead, next jury member. Uh, thank you. Uh, my uh, Hilda here. Uh, just a follow up question on that target. You know, um, what are you? How are you? planning to start because it feels like you're doing so many things in the app. Uh, it's great to be ambitious, but you're going to pick something you want to start with. I, I like when you started with a savings goal and financial education, but then uh, you confused me when you got to Fitbit. Um, what is the long-term incentive uh, for people to with you? Because you're talking about rewards. I would imagine the target audience, majority in Africa, where I come from, would, would not care so much about rewards uh, or bonuses, you know, they want to be able to build wealth. So how are you looking to build a long-term incentive for people to save with your app? Thank you. Okay. Uh, first, to answer the question about the smartphone deployment, well, we do intend to deploy also in developed countries, high-income countries. Uh, and by time, uh, developing countries would uh, have an increased rate at, of having uh, of smartphone availability. So, on long term, this this app would have a, a big impact. And uh, for quickly the, answer the second question, please. Tan is uh, running. Uh, for the second question, we ha we plan we have uh, an incentive for them to. Have use our app to for the extras they receive from uh, high income countries users that uh, choose to donate their uh, savings to charity organizations, and also the uh, interest uh, they get. Not only that, they would receive uh, financial advisory too. Okay, thank you. We move now to the next team. So kindly, jury members, to input your your ratings for this team when we switch to. Save five, save five. And you wait until I give you the go.
waiting for Benedict input and Ilda. Okay, when the team is ready, you can start. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, just give me one second. Okay, hello, we are Team Saveify, and our mission is to gamify savings to reach your goals. So, what is the problem? Well, at the moment, a major root cause of poverty in LEDCs, especially, is poor saving habits. Now, this is primarily caused by a lack of financial education, but also because there is no current incentive to save. To illustrate my point, consider this graph that represents the percentage of adults who have saved any money in the last year. As you can see, it is evident that the situation is only declining. Now, how would the solution help the community? Well, there are several different but the two main factors, financial security and credibility when dealing with other financial institutions, as these were the two factors that were increased the most. Therefore, we made Savify. Savify is a website that gamifies and incentivizes saving with rewards. Now, in particular, Savify guides savers to saving up for particular goods and services. Overall, the saving becomes more effective with the gamification aspect due to features such as rewards, a competitive leaderboard for consistency, and concrete goals. The purpose of Savify is to encourage savings mentality instead of purely injecting capital into these people just for them to eventually return to their poor habits. Now, I will show a demo of our website. When you reach the website, you will see a variety of different products to select from to save up for. For instance, you can choose a cell phone. Following that, you get a list of tracks that are offered by sponsors or Savify partners that are offered both different models of whatever product you're saving up for, as well as an additional bonus. Like for instance, this one would be a Google Pixel 4a, as well as one year free 4G bonus. You can choose that one. And then we have to fill out some information. So for instance, our starting balance might be uh, 30K Naira, which is Nigerian currency. We might deposit 10K Naira per week, and our interest rate might be zero. The last two input fields are completely optional. Now we get a summary of what we have filled out, but the most important thing to notice here is the goal, which clearly states that we have to deposit 10K Naira per week for 105 weeks consistently to fulfill our goal. Now we connect a bank account. And one minute. Something like, if you use something like a SMS payment or a, a mobile app for payment, then you can always use alternate methods to connect. Now we reach the welcome page where we clearly see our um, current goal, as well as how much we have in our savings account and what tracks we're enrolled in, as well as our, um, it indicates our problems. Now, let's say that in five days we are on our salary and we want to add 20K Naira. We can click here and add 20K Naira in five days. And using our bank account connection, say if I can verify this with our bank account and we can return. Now our page has been updated. We have a one week streak. Our savings account balance has been increased and our progress has been updated. Now, let's say you want to change your track or you want to add a new one. You can go to the track catalog and search for a new one, or you can filter with our filters for each category. Finally, once again, for the competitive aspect, we have a global leaderboard of weekly streaks to compare with other people who is the most consistent. So just to recap, Savify gamifies saving to help you reach your goals. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for the jury? Um, well, I have yeah. one because you, sorry. Just, mm, just a quick, yeah, just a quick question. Uh, you've mentioned a link to a bank account, which means that uh, they, they have to be banked because most probably we're targeting the unbanked. So how how does this uh, work? And uh, the last uh, listing of the people uh, is this going to be shown to everyone? Like um, like what about the confidentiality or whatever it is when it comes right. to the public? I'll get to that. So um, your first question was uh, with the bank accounts. So when you click on the alternate method, not only is this for if you have a mobile app for um, banking or even SMS payment, but also for those who don't have access to a bank account. So you can actually manually input your uh, savings to update them and continue with your tracks. Um, and then regarding the confidentiality, um, if you realize, we actually used pseudo names. We were thinking it would not be very safe or reliable to include the real names. So they were all pseudo names, but it still shows you, it gives you a good view of uh, where you are at with your consistency in terms of saving. So completely confidential. Jury members, any other question? Okay, if there are no questions, please. Just, just uh, one last question. Uh, I'm struggling with my, with my, and my button. Uh, how, how do you make money? It wasn't clear from your presentation how you plan to make money. Is it from the savings commission right. or, or what? 
So our business model um, is that we actually sell data anonymously to these organizations that partner with us. So for instance, if you remember those two input fields, we had what is your monthly salary and why are you saving, as well as information about what product you're saving up for and the particular model. All of this information, if you allow it, is um, sell, sold um, anonymously to these organizations. So that's what's in it for us. Um, in terms of the savers, obviously their benefit is that they receive this additional rewards by saving with us if they consistently um, keep track of their savings. And what's in it for the organizations is that they receive a platform to advertise as well as promote themselves and um, also get this uh, target. Okay, thank you. So we switch to the next thing, which is loan for all. And jury members kindly input your scores. Real life statistics have already proven that roughly 1.1 billion. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just wait, wait a sec. Wait, 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 okay, we have all the inputs, so it can start now. Real life statistics have already proven that roughly 1.1 billion people remain unmanned, and around 1.7 billion people are officially identified making it difficult for some people to join financial institutions and make any loans. That's why we came up with the solution of a decentralized peer-to-peer -to -peer lending platform that aims at widening and expanding um, the, ab the ability of getting loans and making loans. It doesn't depend on uh, traditional financial institutions and uh, there is no central financial institution involved in it, making it uh, uh, completely free for anyone to lend and uh, anyone with any can enter uh, this application. So there's no collateral requirement. Loan for All is a mobile first platform with a simple and elegant user interface. Loans can be given and taken out in the form of stable coins or cryptocurrencies that are pegged to traditional finance uh, fiat currencies. To promote correct use, it will be rewarded with our platform's native token. To maximize accessibility and ensure that as many people can participate in our platform, we have set the interest rates to be fixed and low. Users are in addition rewarded with our platform's native loan for all tokens. These tokens have been launched by our team onto the Ethereum blockchain and can be easily stored and transacted. To ensure that our platform complies with all the legislation in the jurisdictions it operates in, we will use KYI blockchain software and gain all the necessary licensing in the area of peer-to-peer -peer loans. Now, the main question is how can we guarantee the repayment of loans without a central financial intermediary? Well, we have three ways of doing this together. Firstly, we will limit the borrowing capabilities of new users and only increase them once the trust score increases. Secondly, repayments are incentivized by our rewards program, which increases for loans given and repayments made. And finally, in the event that someone takes off with someone's loan, users would have the ability to sell the debt to debt collection agencies, which we will link the users with. One minute. Loan for All is about simplicity and ease of use. Therefore, we designed the app with more but simple pages. Now, let's imagine you would like to give a loan. Through your homepage, you'd go to New Loan. Then, you choose to lend. Now, you can see eligible users that have requested to borrow a certain amount. Next, you choose a user to view their profile. There you will find all the information. Once you are ready, click on Lend. Choose the amount you would like to lend. If it is less than the requested amount, other lenders will ask. Finally, you are done. Loan for all. Making loans accessible to everyone coming soon to a region near you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Questions from the jury? Um, no, great, great idea. This is basically what we are trying to do here in Kenya as Pezesha after this. But uh, to my question, um, how do you uh, ensure supply meets demand? So assuming there's no lenders, 
um, you know, how do you how do you ensure that that uh, uh, loan is funded? And, and, and of course, how do you how is your business model work? How do you get a cut uh, from every loan you facilitate? Thank you. Well, we cannot force people to give loans and we cannot force people to take loans. So we aim to incentivize the use of our platform through the reward system that we've included. So if you give a loan, you would get a reward. And the more loans you give, the more rewards you get. But it's also the same the other way around. If you repay your loan, you will get rewards and then you can use the platform more and more and take out bigger and bigger loans. As for our revenue model, it, it would be a combination of two things. Firstly, we would take a small cut of the interest that would be paid back. And secondly, we would also be able to use the data that we have collected on the platform and distribute it and sell it to certain organizations and companies because this data would be um, useful in terms of understanding consumption patterns and understanding who is financially active. But of course, it would all be anonymous. Any other question from the jury? We still have 30 seconds for one more question. I have one of the jury that don't have. I, I just need to ask how we're going to manage the risk. This is people's money uh, from peer to peer. So how are you going to manage the risk between the people? Exactly. And that's one of the main things. Um, that's one of the main issues we have when making something like this purely peer to peer. So we talked about the three methods that we want to minimize risk. So we talked about limiting the amount that users can borrow at first. So if you're a new user, you can borrow, let's say, five dollars. But as you show that you are a person who is able to repay your loan, then your confidence score increases and you would be eligible to take more out. We also incentivize people to give out more loans, even if they might be more risky through the reward system. But in the event that something bad happens and someone just takes off with the loan, there is this opportunity, as we mentioned, to sell to, to sell the debt to a debt collection agency, which would be more fit to um, track down the person and seize the assets in order to pay off the debt. OK, thank you. So we now move to the next thing, which is Megi Meru. Did I pronounce it correctly? <laughs> the name of the team. Yes. And yes. jury members kindly input your scores and wait. The team just wait that I give you the call. Okay. Benedict, I missed your your score for the last team. Ah, I got it now. Okay, thank you. So, is the team ready? Whenever you want, you can start. Um, is the screen turning out? Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we see the screen. We hear you loud and clear. Okay, perfect. I'm ready to start. Then go ahead. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Team Hummingbird. Thank you all for being here. The main issue we wanted to tackle with our project is financial illiteracy. Uh, why? Because we know that financial illiteracy has a lot of devastating repercussions that not only affect the livelihood of people living in developing countries and rural areas, but also on the economies of these governments. These repercussions include debt, fraud, poverty, and bankruptcy. So the solution we decided to develop was a game Megamaru. It is a storyline based game that so, sort of walks the player through the main character's encounters, where the player learns from the situations of the main character. And then the knowledge of the user is then tested based on the levels that the user went through. The user can complete the questions and they get rewarded based if they get right answers or wrong answers. And they're told why this is why this is a correct answer, why this is not the correct answer. So, how is Megamaru a solution? That because it addresses younger people living in poorer areas like Somalia, who have very high potential but also very low financial literacy. So we thought that instead of creating some boring slides about finance, we can better make a fun interactive game. This will help us fight against financial illiteracy 
leading the younger generation to be more protective against fraud, fraud and exploitation. Thus, they can enjoy a brighter future. What makes Migamaru spe special is that it is implemented on the uh, independent on the operating system and is translatable, so it can reach different developing countries where people usually don't speak foreign languages. Also, we aim to partner with institutions like the Egyptian Banking Institute or NGOs in Somalia. One minute. This will help uh, to be more accessible to students and avoid advertisement. advertisement. The frontend of the application is written in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, whereas the backend has been implemented using Python. No libraries have been used in the application. The entire app is GDPR compliant, therefore the user can request to see or delete all of their user data. If you want, you can scan the QR code below to try our game online. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Questions from the jury? Yes, I, I would like to ask, what is your business model? Uh, well, the business model is uh, hopefully partnering with um, NGOs in the countries that we're aiming to release the game in. This will not only provide us with uh, lessons or content for the game, so we know that we're providing authentic content that will actually help uh, children learn the game or benefit from the game as much as possible, and only and also to implement the game in schools so the game can be played by as much people as possible like in schools like partnering with governmental organizations and non-governmental organizations as well in these uh, respective countries okay thank you thank you any other question from the jury how, how do you sorry no no please go ahead yeah how do you measure success or whether the content was was impactful well, to the to the user how do you measure success well the score that we implemented on the game based on how uh, how many attempts does the user take to finish the lessons if they concluded the lessons that we implemented correctly like answering the questions correct or not correctly how many times they repeated the lesson when you repeat the lessons more times and you answer the question correctly every time, you will get a higher score. The quicker you finish the game, you'll get a higher score. There are multiple like mechanisms that go into identifying if you get a high or a low score. I hope we that also, answered your question. We also intend to add a feedback form at the end of the game where users yes. uh, would add if they wanted to learn about anything that wasn't included in the game. Yes. Um, um, if uh, I, I just want to ask because I know that it's purely educational, but have you ever did you try to link it with any um, people who are actually going to use the financial uh, services rather just by do the game and 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 that would be the end of it? <clears throat> we actually aim to partner with a government or non-government institution who aim to provide uh, educational services to poor areas or to people who are financially illiterate. Okay, thank you. So we're going to move to the next team, which is Eli, and kindly ask the jury to put your scores for team number five of the scores. Can the LE team get ready? We're gonna start now. We have the jury finish finish already. All right. You can go ahead when you're ready. Okay. Thank you. Africa has a crisis of financial illiteracy. The average percentage of Africans that are financially illiterate is at twenty eight percent. People are stuck in poverty all because they don't have access to capital as they can't understand the complex finance terms of today's economy. 
Many people in Africa don't understand the loan or insurance contract as these documents can spend pages of financial jargon that makes no sense to them whatsoever. As a result of this low financial literacy, it has also been extremely easy for predatory bankers to trick and trick people and rob them blind of their money. Because of all this, 80% of Africans end up being unbanked. That's 326 million people. Here is our solution, Eli. Eli is an application that takes com complicated financial terms and explains them in a context-based example with more simple vocabulary. This allows the user to see what would happen specifically if they took out a loan rather than a generalized description, which can make them pray for predatory bankers. We will do this by partnering with local banks who will send us the contract in digital format. As the contracts will be based on templates, large machine learning algorithms with huge processing requirements will not be necessary, as only a few words will have to be scanned. Our innovative app prototype that is compatible with smartphones and ITEL handheld devices consists of 2,500 lines of HTML code. This short video gives an overview of our app. As you can see, after filling in the login details, there will be a list of your ongoing contracts. And here's an example of one of the contracts. As you can see, it is extremely long-winded. One of the best, most innovative features of our app is that when a complicated financial term is pressed, a description of the word will come up in the context of their loan. In this case, after I pressed interest, I was given an extremely easy to understand example. A minute. Okay, so, okay, so as you can see, the main point of our application is to educate the financially illiterate, giving them access to services and capital that they would have otherwise been unable to acquire. It also makes people more aware of the loaning tactics that banks use, thus helping them become less prone to fall victim to predatory lending. Additionally, our application holds huge benefits for banks and insurance companies by giving them access to an immense new market base that has a ton of untapped potential. It also increases their market share and gives them more recognition. Moreover, it can help banks indirectly by boosting the local economy and giving rise to loads of new startup businesses. So that was our application, Eli. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Questions from the jury? Maybe I will ask the same question again. What is your business model? How do you plan to make uh, money with this well, application? Well, basically, our idea is a more thing like uh, a marketing way for businesses. So the funding will come from the banks and insurance companies that will integrate our idea with their services. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from the jury? Okay. Sorry. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so 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 what may, what makes you unique? A bank can... Uh, can, can replicate this and just decide, you know, um, they, they're going to do it themselves. Uh, they've learned what you do and they don't need you anymore. So, so what makes your, your integration unique? Well. Uh, well, uh, like, that's a very good question. Um, yeah. What makes it unique? Uh, well, it's a first kind of a system. I've never seen this done before. And I don't okay. see any other banks who've done a similar kind of thing to this. I don't know if how if if they care to copy it, because if they would copy it, that would or many banks would miss out on opportunities to add small things into their. Uh, contracts that would earn them extra money. So by using the system voluntarily, they'd uh, make it harder for themselves to earn more money. Okay, thank you. So we're going to move to the next team, which is Farm Clusion. So get ready, I give you the go when I get all the jury scores from the previous team.
Whenever you are ready, you can go. Um, can you hear me? Yes, and also see the slides. Okay. So, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we will present to you our idea of an application that would be called Farm Inclusion. We decided to give it this name as a target audience of benefit of farmers, and our objective is to include them in the economy strongly. But, but before we get on to how we plan on doing that, first we'd like to talk about the problem, and then we'll talk about the app as a solution. Well, often due to the lack of uh, education, these farmers never learn or understand things such as handling money or how to use financial products provided by banks. Agriculture, in comparison to other sectors, struggles to adopt modern technology, which not only, only increases their yield, but also increases profit in the long term, making their farming environment, environmentally better as well, possibly. And it also incre uh, reduces food contamination and usage of water and chemicals, though sometimes low producing farmers often do not have the financial capabilities even though they might have the knowledge. Which is why we have a crowdfunding fun functionality in our app. Here the farmers will get their objectives displayed with the possibility of other users of the app to donate directly to us. And we would buy the product on behalf of the farm. This way we negate any possible flaws in the system. The farmer themselves would be checked out before their donation page is open. The user would see what percent of the farmer's goal was reached and would and get a personal message from the farmers themselves once donated. With another one, once the farmer receives their good, anyone would be possible donators as we believe that there are enough good people out there. But for the farmers uh, to take good financially informed decisions by themselves, we would educate them very well with the following stages. Stage one, concept of monetary value. Stage two, Concept of paying bills, saving up budgets. Stage three, understanding investing. Stage four, improving quality of farming, how to maximize sales. We'll introduce concepts of basic financial products and producing financial decision making and practicing financial decision making. Once they complete the course, they will write an exam and get a certificate with which they could apply for a donation for the, our donation page or possibly use their own money to achieve their goals and be financially included in the economy. One minute. Here are some screenshots of our mobile app. You can see the home page and then the crowdfunding page and then a possible path taken by the user in the learning section. And here are screenshots of the website of the website that you, you can see the home learning program sign up, signing up and donation page. Though this we were able to implement and think through, there were other ideas that came into our head, which the app could be expanded to have such as platform for farmers to promote their products, provide insurance. Incentive donation availability in enormous language. Hopefully, farm collusion is a solution we need. Thank you. We are really interested in hearing your feedback. Thank you. Question from the jury. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, what is the incentive for me as a donor? Why should I, as a donor, uh, donate to you farm collusion? Well, why do people donate to charities? Yes, but why in particular to yours? Well, because we have a particular um, target audience and we will show them for sure how their money actually makes a difference. Whereas many uh, charities out there do not show actually the difference it makes. You're not able to see an actual difference. Okay, thank you. I mean, I'm just, I'm just curious to, to know your, your sustainability of, of your solution uh, beyond the donations. Uh, are you looking at other means to make sure that uh, if those donations don't come immediately, how are you going to make sure that you survive and keep uh, crowdfunding model working, uh, you know, both in the demand and supply side of things? Uh, I'm not sure if I understood your question correctly, but... Um, we would probably need to get some partners, possibly um, banks or other um, uh, other non-government uh, organizations where they would basically invest in them. So like we said in our previous uh, slide that we would incentivize these donations, uh, if we could possibly come up with a proper model, uh, then uh, I'm sure we would be able to get some uh, organizations to actually invest in um, these people and their futures. Okay, thank you. So we can move to the next thing, which is you invest. 
And jury members, please input your scores for team number seven. Dear jury members, dear colleagues, today wait, we wait, are going wait. to present... Wait, Sorry? I haven't given you the go. You have to wait. Okay, okay. Okay, whenever you're ready, now you can talk. <laughs> okay, dear jury members, dear colleagues, today we are going to present to you Juvenvest. Juvenvest is a Luxembourg-based NGO that promotes financial inclusion in all parts of the world for everybody, like Amar from Nigeria, for example. Amar recently wanted to expand his small restaurant, but needed a small loan for doing so. His project being of such a small scale, he got rejected multiple times by local banks. That's exactly where Juvenvest comes into play. As we stand for maximum fairness, our goal is to actively alleviate poverty by providing an investment platform that allows investors to invest in small African business projects. Like Amas, we believe that everyone should be allowed to start and grow a business project regardless of the origin. That's why we facilitate even very small investments from as little as 10 euros up to bigger investments. To a small investment, you can have a substantial impact and help Amar acquire self-reliance. Our role in this project is basically to unite locals and investors that want to do responsible investing. We would act as middlemen in this operation, which means that we guarantee safe and easy money transfer and business verification thanks to our direct relations to the people in the different areas. In order to cover all the costs in process and create revenue, a small fee will be charged. We at Juvenvest stand for maximum transparency. We give you total control of your investment. Thanks to Juvenvest, you get a unique chance to geographically diversify your portfolio and get into contact with the locals you support. By closely collaborating with the local telecommunication companies, like for example, Vodafone, we could set up a free USSD-based chatbot for the people receiving the investments. As no internet connection is required at all and the type of mobile device is inconsequential, we would offer an affordable solution to SMS and easy access to financial information, hence further promoting financial inclusion. One minute. In order to convert, Poverty in the long term, we want to encourage our investors to reinvest their returns. This would be done by the means of digital devices and create direct contact between locals and investors, creating a unique experience. Last but not least, let's check out our beautifully designed Juvenvest website. As you can see, users will be led to a main page where they immediately see our business concept and get a chance to check out some business projects. To each business project corresponds a detailed description about the people and the investment. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Questions from the jury? Hi. This is a crowdfunding concept for businesses in uh, underdeveloped markets. Is that right? Yes, that's the main concept. Okay but also to, uh, to inform, to give information to the people and to really um, set into practical use the information they get from the chatbot, the USSD-based chatbot we are trying to set up with the local telecommunication company. Okay. Thank you. Next question. Yeah, I have a question. Why investors are going to trust your platform, especially that it's scattered around the world? So how are they going to make sure that this is the right business, it's not a fraud, or it's going to make... Um, money they're going to make money out of their investments um so mainly it's in order to help people grow and stabilize a business but as i mentioned we have digital devices nowadays and we want to uh, to encourage the people that invest and the people that get the investments to to be linked so they would be uh, there would be uh, media sessions where they could uh, talk about the project and we all as I mentioned, we have uh, trustworthy people that are in the respective areas, and um, they would then um, uh, transfer the knowledge to uh, to the information to 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 the investors, and so they can see 
that it's an honest business. Thank you. Any last question from the jury? Okay, thank you. So, jury members, kindly input your score 14, number 8. Thank you for the feedback. And now we move to the next thing, which is EDU. Please get ready and wait for my go. Whenever you are ready, you can start. All right. <clears throat> Knowledge is a slide, powerful. Put, sorry, sorry. Put the slide on presentation mode so we can see them. Thank yep. you. You can go ahead now. Knowledge is a powerful tool that enables humans to develop and grow. So we intended our project to pro provide financial knowledge to people who are financially illiterate and consequently are living in poverty. <clears throat> we fight poverty by teaching them about economics through our project Economic Development Unit, or EDU. Focusing on laying down a foundation about how the system works. An example is how they should manage their money efficiently and, most importantly, independently. So what exactly is EDU? EDU is an educational platform that teaches using our chatbot. Having a multitude of courses tailored for people living in rural areas, our project aims to help people become independent with their money and help them make the best economic decisions. We focus on people with internet access in order to provide our services. We will be working with NGOs in order to provide access to both the internet and the devices required to take our courses. By educating the consumers, it will be easier to fight unemployment and therefore create new job opportunities as more skilled workers will be available. By focusing Focusing on an audience online, we're focusing on a future where everybody will have easy internet access, for example, in Tanzania, one of the poorest countries in Africa. The initiative made by iKnowledge, over 300 schools spread over 25 regions, now have internet access. The government of Tanzania is looking to industrialize, moving away from an agricultural industry. Through in the initiatives it has passed, it managed to reduce unemployment and improve the industry. However, it is still struggling as secondary education enrollment rate fell. Our platform would help with the government's goals and through the efforts of NGOs to spread internet access, I believe our interactive chatbot can make a difference. Allow me to demonstrate. Here, we can see the interaction between the bot and a new user. As we can see, our bot offers a multitude of options such as different courses, comprehensive videos to describe those courses, and even quizzes to help the user understand even better uh, all the courses that we have. One minute. We also have additional features that I would like to show you on our website. Now, we are very much aware about the illiteracy issue. Therefore, both our website and our chatbot provide full text-to-speech assistance. We're also aware of the language barrier. Therefore, we have options in translation. On our website, we have all the details about our initiative, how it works, why I use it. The website will host the chatbot, which can be accessed for free with no requirement for login. However, we still have the feature for login in case a user would like to track their progress with the course or the quizzes. Uh, and we would also like to develop the chatbot so you can access it through a mobile phone, through SMS texting, as well as an offline version, which provides limited uh, courses. And that, here are our sources, and thank you for listening, and remember to fight a good fight. Thank you. So, questions from the jury? Um, my question uh, is, um, because I um, this is, again, I, I have to ask, because it's purely an educational uh, 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 app, but did, did you ever think of how the people are going to react about after they're going to get educated about a certain uh, product or service or solution? Like, how, how, how are you going to let the people actually use and what, what success looks like to you? I will let one of my uh, teammates answer that question. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't really get uh, your question. Could you repeat it? 
So how are you going to measure your success out of this application? Are people are just going to be educated? Are you going to link it to a certain usage of a certain service or a solution that, that, that the people are very well educated of? Uh, do you mean the courses? The users, the users, how, how you measure success, how a user, yeah. knows he or she's making success. Uh, uh, the website, if you make an account, if you sign up, uh, there is a progress uh, bar that uh, shows you how far you've uh, you completed uh, the course, uh, like how much of the course you've completed. And uh, we also provide the like quizzes. These uh, quizzes like uh, measure uh, the user's grasp of the concepts and uh, the lessons. So uh, th uh, if he wishes to make an account, uh, he could uh, track his marks and uh, his progress. Yeah. Uh, hello, hi. Um, this is NASA. Um, uh, this comment actually applies to, I think, a few um, of the presentations because there's been a lot on financial literacy, and I, I think that's fantastic. Um, how are you going to incentivize anyone to take these things? I mean, a, lo a lot of the evidence shows that, I mean, we have busy lives. Nobody sits down to learn about finance. Um, I mean, financial literacy is not just a problem in developing markets, it's actually a huge problem in the Western world as well. Even Luxembourg only has 30% financial literacy, right? Uh, and that's simply because nobody has the time to actually dedicate to going through a program to learn about finance. How are you going to incentivize someone to do that? <clears throat> that's one of my teammates wants to answer, if I may. And I love the way you're deflecting the answers. That's really excellent. I, I like that. <laughs> uh, no. Um, so through our partnerships with the NGOs, we uh, we expect and we want to achieve a level of advertisement and pushing. And again, it's part of the education, making people understand first of all how important it is that they are economically literate. So as a first initiative is first proving the importance of this sort of thing and then actually going ahead and teaching the people through the use of the chatbot like uh, education is something that uh, people uh, go after it's not uh, like people go to school to learn about uh, different types uh, different sciences like uh, we don't have to uh, make them like we don't have to make uh, a reason for for people to go uh, study we just like provide the uh, the information in an easy way uh, through the chatbots and uh, an offline uh, way also through an sms uh, chatbot and uh, downloadable content so whoever uh, like uh, wants to uh, learn about finance and wants to lift himself out of poverty and uh, know how to manage uh, his money and his finance he could access our uh, service for free okay. easily Thank you. Thank you. We move now to the next team, which is Seguro SMS. Uh, wait for my goal while the jury is finishing uh, their scoring on the current team. Whenever you are ready, you can start. Am I audible? Yes, we hear you. Okay, perfect. And see you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are Team Albatross. Uh, it's a pleasure to be presenting in front of you guys today. On our team, we have Sophia from Luxembourg, Amir from Egypt, Susanna from Armenia, and myself, Shaitana, also from Luxembourg. During this hackathon, we've been able to research the main problems faced with current banking apps. Number one is internet access. 3.6 billion people do not have access to the internet, yet most bank apps today are internet based. Other than this, we found two main complaints, stolen details and ads. Thus, we welcome you to our solution to these problems and our vision for financial inclusion, Seguro SMS. Segura SMS is a server and an SMS-based mobile banking app to ensure that users can transfer money to others safely and without the use of the internet. The app is what you're seeing on your screen right now. We solved the issues of the stolen data through our main feature, security. So now we'll explain how it works. To start with, what, what problems are we exactly trying to solve? 
While SMS and USSD messages are being intercepted by hackers, when people contact their banks, uh, meaning that PIN details are stolen. And in order to solve this problem, we can encrypt the SMSs, right? So, so our app encrypts the SMS messages before sending them to the network provider Safaricom. But there's a small problem. Safaricom won't be able to understand the encrypted SMS messages. So to address this issue, we decided to create a server to which our app sends the messages where they're decrypted and forwarded to Safaricom. In order to ensure that a server is able to decrypt the messages, we use the Diffie Helm and Key Exchange algorithm to share the passwords between respective users and a server on the unsecure SMS network. However, if we send the information as is, the phone number of our user will be exposed to the recipient. To avoid companies sending unwanted ads and spam, we attach a temporary number or a pseudo number, if you will, before sending the message. Finally, to ensure that the user's data is not stolen, our server forwards the message to Safaricom over a secure internet connection. And through this, secure SMS's commitment to security, our users remain completely protected, unlike with other SMS banking One minute. services alone. Our mission for is for this app to be as accessible to as many people as possible. For this reason, the app may be shared over Bluetooth so that the internet can, so that internet connection isn't needed to download it. And we plan to partner up with different companies to have the app pre-installed on phones. So here's our homepage with the minimalist design to easily navigate through the app. And we have a chatbot interface where you can choose your appearance according to your liking. And we plan on implementing a voice interaction to help people who can't read or write. So to recap what we did over this weekend, we did extensive market research to find problems with pre-existing services. Secondly, we created a Node.js backend chatbot using the IBM Watson Assistant API. And we created an SMS interface using the Twilio API. We then created a Kai OS application that can encrypt and send SMSs to our server. And then finally, we created an app mockup using Adobe XC that you've been seeing uh, all this time. So in conclusion, our solution to problems in mobile banking will increase financial inclusion as we believe that uh, every user deserves the best security available. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. Questions from the jury? Thank you. Um, I mean, I, I, I think you you lost maybe some people. You've, the technical presentation was too difficult it can get. <laughs> but that said, you know, I understand that you're solving a security problem. Um, you gave Absolutely. an example of, of, of Safaricom. Um, you know, you understand that, for example, in Kenya, 99% of the population is using M-Pesa. Mm -hmm. Many people don't have a bank account. Um, you know, we are a mobile money economy, and that's really the bank account for the underserved. So I just wanted to ask, what are you solving for those people? Because they don't have a bank account. And, and so, you know, if you're going to help them with security issues to a bank account, you know, unless you're talking about M-Pesa, which, um, you know, security has to be uh, ensured by the regulator. So I'm, I'm not sure what, what problem exactly you're solving there. And um, how, how do you plan to make money? So basically, the problem that we're trying to solve, uh, like you rightly mentioned, M-Pesa, they do have... Uh, they do. We re did some market research, and we did find that a lot of people have complaints with M-Pesa and how uh, the SMSs are unencrypted and can be interceptable by hackers. Um, and we we did a lot of research on the SS7 attacks. So what we're trying to solve essentially is we're trying to encrypt these SMSs and make sure that that whatever SMS you send. Um, is not exposed to any hack uh, hacking or any spying or any interception, and all your banking details are safe, and uh, there's no internet connection required uh, uh, for that. And how are we plan to make money? Well, uh, on this, what we plan to do is uh, we plan on making a free tier for the common people and a paid tier for business customers because businesses that use M-Pesa internally would need increased security. And another uh, thing we'd had was uh, to to sort of partner up with more mobile networks. Okay, so thank, that you, thank, you. Deals. thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, we move to to the final team. To remember, please uh, write this team uh, team number ten. You are writing, and uh, next one is uh, Koala Phone Grouping. Get ready and wait for my go.
Can you see my screen? I see the screen, and whenever you are ready, you can start. Okay. Uh, hello, 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 everyone. Today, I'd like to present to you our idea called Koala Fund Grouping. So first, I'd like to explain the problem we are trying to face, which is obviously poverty. And an, inter an interesting statistic is that 3 billion people survive with less than $2.5 daily. And sadly, extreme poverty can be found in Sub-Saharan Africa and in Southern Asia. And unfortunately, with poverty, it can be very difficult to lead good life. And without help, getting out of poverty can be almost impossible. So this is where our project tries to help them. Put it on presentation mode, the slides. Um, there is a problem. You click the presentation mode and reset in the clock. Okay. Should we start again? But put it on presentation mode. Oh, okay. Something moments. Okay. Okay. So yes. do I start from the beginning? Yeah, start from the beginning. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, hi everyone. Today I'd like to present to you our project called Koala Fund Grouping. So first I'd like to explain the problem we are trying to face, which is obviously poverty. An interesting statistic reveals that 3 billion people survive with less than two and a half dollars daily. And sadly, extreme poverty can be found in Sub-Saharan Africa and in Southern Asia. And unfortunately, with poverty, it can be very difficult to lead a good life. And without help, getting out of poverty can be almost impo impossible. So this is where our project tries to help them, which will lead us to our solution, which is a website using the Waska system. The Waska system is a system where people get together and everyone puts their money into a group fund. And then once a month, every person, uh, one person of the group gets all of the money. The cycle is then repeated until every member of the group receives all the amount of money. For new joining members, uh, they would have to register on our website using their ID or social security number or their phone number or their email. And in these countries, trust and communities are very important. So the more trust there is, the more likely people are to pay money to the group fund and use our website. So to increase this trust and cultural connection between members, the first option would be that group members could send uh, group invites to people they already know and trust. Otherwise, the second option would be that users could add a profile picture and their location and then create private groups. People will then be able to decide if they'd like to accept or decline the member into their group. Uh, since some people might try to opt out of groups, uh, we would have to pre-authorize the money and take the money once they join the group um, to avoid scams and fraud. Also, our website would mainly be used in developing countries, uh, and a lot of people would not have access to internet, as you can see on the map. Therefore, we'd have to add uh, support for USSD payments. And with USSD, you can join groups and make payments One just minute. with your mobile phone and service, which resolves the no internet issue. Then our website would be sustained uh, through donations, advertising, and partners partnerships with banking services. Our website would focus on rural communities, and they would have to learn to strengthen their bonds using the invest system and learning to trust each other. Using our website, we solve to give access to loans. We allow safe savings. And if they don't have ID papers, they can just sign up using their phone number. Now we'll show you a quick prototype of our website. So this is the website I have created. This is the home page and the about page which, contain, which contains the information about it. You can contact us to request to make a group. We'll see the website now. now we what? Go ahead. We didn't saw the website. Go ahead. You can choose whether it's public, whether it's public or private. Then the amount of money and the number of members in the assembly view, the, uh, the requests and just created for them. Now for the viewing available groups, you can just view the available groups and join one. For example, this one is for $20. So you fill the info and you join it. So you can view yourself here after joining and the city or village. So we can solve the trust issue as people know each other. You have the account page where you can up upload your uh, uh, profile picture for more trust, and you can write your feedback so people know if it is good or not. For example, this is the feedback. Okay. 
Thank you. Time is over. Thank you. So we switch now to questions from the jury. Question from the jury, please. Um, I can I can ask my question because I'm familiar with the Rosk model from where I come from. So um, um, how would you encourage the public people to get together and increase their trust over each other? Because I assume that you said that they can actually disable people from the group. So is the platform is doing something to endorse that? Uh, they can they be knowing each other from previous time and create a private group. Uh, so this is kind of encouraging them. Like uh, not, we can allow uh, location service so they know the available groups in their area and they can join each other. Also using and to the solve the trust issue, they know each other and so on. Through what, sorry? They can use to the invite the system. They can use an invite system and basically invite people they already know so they can encourage encourage people and tell them about the program so yeah basically just invite known people they already know any other question yeah, from the jury my, my last question would be just the the scaling aspect because um a lot of uh, you live in kenya you know people already trust their own system so what's the incentive to come to your own system uh, you know, are you thinking of other value add products that will make them come? Because already uh, the group, the group lending is is happening informally. So if you're gonna give me technology, you're gonna give me other things that I cannot be able to do in my community uh, already informally. So just wanted to understand what you guys are thinking about as as value add. Uh, we can add it to the USSD system. Uh, it will be simple like writing a code and then you can join a group or so on and they use mobile money so it would be good for them. Like they do not use cash there as it was mentioned before. So adding it to USSD would be like benefit them and so on. Final question, from, your question? Final, final question from the jury. Okay, thank you everybody. Now we're now switching to the liberation and we'll come back in 20 minutes. So continue with the program with Anush and the rest of the team while we are thinking about your project. So anyway, congratulations to everybody. Thank you. Great presentation. So the jury went to the other weather camp. Thank you very much. Congratulations to everyone. I think you did really, really great job during the uh, past few days. It was really a quick and technical, issue-free uh, pitch competition. <laughs> we never had so smooth, uh, actually, switching of teams. That, that's cool. And uh, yeah, quality was really, really cool and really impressive. So well done to everyone. Uh, so during this time, uh, the, while the jury is deliberating, we plan to do just some uh, question and answer with some of you that we ask you. Uh, it's not lo just question and answer, it's more like discussion. So I think I know if you have the, the list of volunteers that says, yeah, I want to be part of this. Yeah, so actually and, I have, uh, but I want to say that uh, you can, uh, if there is someone that would like also to participate, of course, you can just join. Uh, we have a chat to discuss with everyone. Uh, what? Coach interviews. Uh, we are going ah. to with the students and then maybe also with the coaches. Maybe after, yeah. <laughs> So we can, uh, Ralph, you want to mention the questions or we just start? I don't have the paper with the question. I have here. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I think, uh, so the questions are uh, a little bit, do uh, you tell us uh, what you are going to study or maybe already studying? Uh, let's say uh, if you have finished already the school and uh, what was the biggest challenge during those two days or even maybe it was related to finding the idea 
And uh, if this was your first hackathon, or you already have been uh, participating, uh, have uh, participated before. So, so let's start with the challenge. <laughs> so I would start, uh, let's start with Sophia. Ladies first. Ladies first, yes. Uh, so what is your plan? For, ah, no, sorry, you said with the challenge. So go ahead, Ralph. So what was the biggest challenge? Uh, during this hackathon, because you participated already to a few hackathons. This one is probably a bit different than other ones. Uh, do you mean me? Uh, no, we have uh, the other <laughs> Sophia, because she uh, volunteered to join in the interviews. But of course, if you would like also to answer afterwards, we would be happy to hear also your challenges. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so um, in response to your question, I think the biggest challenge, at least for me, was to, um, well, the, the time constraint, mainly. I've never really done well with time constraints. I'm always rushing, very, very stressed. Um, but I think it, it is, um, I think it's a very interesting concept. You know, what can we, what can we create in such a short amount of time? What do we prioritize? And it really focuses, at least for me, it it um, made me focus on what really is the priority, what is the biggest thing we can do right now. And it also made things a lot less complicated, I think. So I'm grateful for it also. Okay, great. Sophia, you want the other Sophia, you, you want maybe also to, to answer? <laughs> it's not the must, um, of course. Well, actually, the biggest challenge was finding what else there could be done because you want to do everything as much as possible for the project and you want to contribute as much as you can. So you will always be looking to do something. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, happening all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we didn't plan this through. Should we ask the same question to all everyone that volunteered or should we just read around? Also, if anyone has a comment or wants to add something, it's like an open discussion. So you are free to, to join in and discuss. <laughs> yeah, I think we can go with the same question and then uh, go to the next question, maybe. All right. So Shaitanya, what do you think about the challenge I, I purely think for us, at least our challenge was to make it sort of so that uh, um, have a target audience because our idea was actually quite complex um, to sort of uh, modify it in a way that other people would understand was our biggest issue. We worked really hard on that. You know, we still wanted to keep the technical details to really make sure uh, and of uh, the specificity we wanted to do. But otherwise, I, I think uh, we did really well. That was the only challenge I, I felt we had. Okay, thank you. Um, Yasin? Yasin Nabil? Uh, yes. Uh, what about you? What was the biggest challenge during those a few days? Uh, staying focused during like the, the 21 hours, staying focused for as long as possible because like for me at least, um, taking a break would all the ideas would vanish from my mind, but like keeping keep on going, and uh, I can find like uh, what can we improve on our presentation or our idea. So biggest challenge was staying focused for the duration of the hackathon, but it was great fun. I love being here. Very happy great. to hear that. <laughs> well, you're happy you came as well. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, what about Bogdan? So maybe you can also share your thoughts about it. Well, for me, I feel like this, the hardest part was the start, kind of like to find the direction we were heading in. And well, and then on, it was just, it was just, I guess, following, following the path. After that, it just kind of like all, all came in, it came in after, after the start and we just got on with it and just, yeah, it, it, then it was just very, just a straight road. Yeah, okay. And uh, I guess the uh, mentors helped you as well. Even it's, it's like the mentor session happens in nearly the half of the hackathon, which is then like you already started for several hours. But uh, yeah. was, it, was it helpful for you? Well, yeah, that was actually very helpful. Like, uh, 
a part of even core like aspects of our entire project. Uh, they they were really assisted by the mentors. Like it just gave us a much clearer idea, obviously from professionals, of what we could do to improve our entire project. That's okay. great. Um, should we go with the next question uh, with yeah. the others? Uh, not to make a bit uh, yes. <laughs> to repeat. Uh, so the next question, if uh, this was the first hackathon, uh, maybe we can just ask uh, if uh, there uh, if there is someone who participated in person hackathon before and now it, in online and like uh, what is your feeling like the difference between in person and online hackathon? So this is uh, addressed to everyone. Uh, if there is someone who before participated in in person hackathon, just uh, please uh, let us know your uh, opinion, your feelings, uh, and the difference like uh, between the two. What do you prefer? Um, well, I think that I think they're both uh, very different and. They both have parts that are harder and parts that are easier. I would say that an in-person hackathon at these companies are, it's just, it's a real experience being there with people and all that. So that is definitely different, but this is still, um, an on uh, online hackathon is still better than no hackathon or a boring weekend, you know? So it's, it's still absolutely great to have this in COVID times. Okay, that's interesting to hear. So you have been in a uh, in person hackathon at LTS before. Yes. <laughs> okay. Also fintech hackathon. I I think yes. <laughs> so you have big experience. <laughs> I remember they ate so much candy actually. <laughs> so the free candy you get. <laughs> uh, so one question to Kazesmir. Uh, Sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. Uh, so, uh, because you are one of our youngest students, and I would like to ask, what are your future plans? Like, what uh, if you already planned what you are going to study in the future? Well, uh, well, my plans are, are like generally science and programming oriented, and also some robotics. Uh, yes. Well, I am fourteen, so yeah. So you have still time. <laughs> And, uh, for example, you enjoyed this hackathon since this was uh, the first hackathon you participated at LTS. Yes, uh, I, I think that the hackathons are, are a great idea to like uh, promote teamwork, for example. Uh, is there, is there, did you have in your team a challenge uh, with teamwork since it was online or uh, it was uh, fine with the planning? What is your thoughts about that? Well, in my opinion, the it was very well organized because, well, uh, we were all communicated via Discord, so it was uh, organized quite well. So, so there were, were no uh, issues with with team communication. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Fast, do you have something to add? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say um, uh, the team Gecko slides. We just had uh, surprise in there. Uh, if anyone can find it, um, I think our coach Juan will just send the slides in general chat. And uh, if anyone can find the what we had there, well, I think it might be a bit dangerous because uh, <laughs> your coach was Juan, and <laughs> we don't trust him. <laughs> Seems legit. Check it out. Since yesterday, we don't trust him anymore. <laughs> so you can uh, even check it out on YouTube. Uh, no, no, you have to have the slides open for uh, so you can discover the uh, the hidden feature. <laughs> uh, use you have to use slideshow as well. You have to go on slideshow and then you have to look around and maybe you can find the hidden Easter egg. Exactly. So don't spoil it for the others if you do find it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, Raf, do you have any question? Or... Um, not specially. <laughs> we, okay. we can still ask also the others what they plan to study. It's always interesting. Like even if it is a tech school, we are always surprised of the, sometimes people say, "No, actually, I will not study tech anymore. <laughs> I'm going to medicine or any other field," which is interesting. 
So we can ask maybe Steve, because he also volunteered to participate. So Steve, uh, what are your future plans? Or he's not here? Steve is... Can I add something? Yes, yeah, sure. Well, I'm very happy to participate in this hackathon because there are many uh, happy and good people. For example, I like my team very much, uh, Felix, Daniel, Albert, and of course, Isman, he is the best coach I can ever imagine. <laughs> so he's very <laughs> friendly and understands us uh, very good. So uh, we, uh, uh, the idea, uh, which is very uh, uh, strong, is our buddy and improved it and uh, gave us many strong advices. So I can, uh, if there is uh, uh, some awards for uh, people who presented their uh, team uh, teams uh, work well. Uh, I can choose uh, two uh, of them because uh, uh, they presented their uh, work very well. Uh, the first is uh, uh, I don't know his name. I can uh, say Saitanya. Uh, you are uh, you speak English well and you uh, has uh, you have a, a lot of energy. You are uh, best. You can be leader in the future. And good work. I like your team's work and uh, I want to add that Daniel is a, uh, was very good because he uh, he's a very good speak, speak English and uh, he's very uh, he believes uh, himself but it's very impor important for everyone in this age and I'm very uh, thankful for everyone um, to creating this hackathon and giving us a great opportunity and chance to uh, try our uh, pow uh, power and understand our opportunities and their limits. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ike, for feedback. Brother, <laughs> brother, appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, I just want brother. to mention that I think this year Isma will get the, the most beloved coach uh, <laughs> title because we have uh, many students that they love Isma a lot. But of course, uh, you do really He's great amazing. job. <laughs> That's very nice. <laughs> Thank you, Hike. Thank you, Hike. Great, uh, great feedback. I think you can join the jury next time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. I will try. <laughs> Online is easier to do more things <laughs> with more people. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's great. So I have one question, for example, to Aryaman. Um, because uh, before you participated as a student, uh, as participant, and this time you were a coach, uh, like what do you think? What is easier to be a participant or to be a coach? I, I think it's the same difficulty. So I was always online for the past two days, you know, to help out my team. And I think generally both are very fun. And I think both are the same. Maybe one of them is a little bit harder because I have a lot of responsibility. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, Leon, what do you think? Uh, I, like, um, I had an amazing team. It's, they work really hard on the idea. And um, yes, I have also participated at Hackathons uh, organized by ITS. Um, they are always really great. <laughs> I'm not being paid to say that. Um, what can I say? Yes, it's yeah, it's 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 great to participate. And um, this time, yes, I agree with Ironman. We have more responsibility, but it's always great to see the outcome of what all the teams come up with and all the amazing jobs they have done. Because yeah, it's really amazing. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Juan, what would you add? I mean, I would go and say that it's harder to be a coach because for me, it just feels, you know, I just feel the pressure of needing to lead my team in the right direction and making sure that somehow they don't work on something that's not going to benefit them, you know? So knowing what to focus on with them is, is hard, right? Because sometimes there's so many good ideas and you have to choose one to implement. And um, also it's complicated to evaluate mentorship sessions because for example, after the mentorship sessions happened, um, the team was asking, you know, what do we do with this, right? How do we interpret it? And I also have, you know, let's, let's say sometimes difficulty 
to interpret the mentorship uh, the mentor's advice right and to know what to follow and what to not follow you know because there's so many divergent opinions so uh, i think i think being a coach is, is pretty hard in that regard but i had fun the team uh, worked to the best of their abilities it was great communication great teamwork um we spent almost the full hackathon in the discord voice chat and i i did go uh working a little bit late to fix bugs and technical issues but um yeah that was that was also part of the fun i guess so yeah great experience as a coach as well okay thank you and uh, felix uh, <laughs> now question to you uh, what are you going to do after the school? Did you already decide, like, your future profession? Uh, no, I didn't yet. Um, but uh, surely something in tech or, um, yeah, in tech, maybe. Prof maybe yeah. professional streamer, something like that? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, Looking at your setup? <laughs> I, I would need another computer for that. <laughs> But I got OBS. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so now I think we are. Uh, we would like to hear some feedback, maybe, uh, or let's say if you have any suggestion for next time. So um, who would like to? Ah, I see the jury is back. So I think ah, they are back. So, yes. That's good. So then we will know the winners very very soon. <laughs> So we wait for Sergio. Sergio is here. <laughs> Normally in the real hackathon, you see the jury from very far away in a hidden room, and then you can check out like the discussion or the gesture. But here, <laughs> all is dark. <laughs> so so we're ready? Back. Yes, go ahead. Is everybody ready to hear the winners? We are waiting. Any guess? So number three is synergy. Ooh. We need some noise here, Rod. Like that. Congratulations. It's really hard to decide, I can tell you. So for the other teams um, that maybe are not on second and first, uh, you should be proud because it was really hard for the jury to decide. And now number two is Savify. <laughs> and number one, are we ready? Ralph on music. Long for all. So with this, we reached to the end to this uh, busy weekend. Uh, once again, thank you to, to the jury for, for your energy and discussions and, and trying to find out basically reality on the idea. So this is uh, highly appreciated. Uh, the jury was really impressed of what you were able to do during these two days uh, in terms of uh, implementation, the quality of the ideas, the presentation. Of course, they challenge some of your points, like using Fitbits or what is your business model and so on. But remember, this is a learning um, experience. So take these learnings from your future entrepreneurship or projects uh, as life take you on professionally. And um, let's not forget that um, it, it's all about experience, that the process that takes you today here. Uh, working in teams um, have to you know to make it uh, with some difficulties on technical problems communication uh, but important is the 11 teams made it today presentation quality was high for all teams so thank you for that and with that uh, I want to thank you uh, Anush especially and Ralph and Sara uh, who are also working a lot in the background on on top of all the LTS coaches and, and the students and I want to close here with a with a big thank you and applause for for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. We are done. It. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Yeah, excellent work. Excellent work. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.
organizing this and thanks for everybody. Asadja, you're you having a virtual celebration. I hope you're having a virtual celebration for the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. In COVID times. <laughs> We'll do something. You see some dancing there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, with the rig troll. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you don't know, there have been a lot of communication in this core. Ralph, how many messages we have in this core? You have an idea? A lot. I don't have any idea, but a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so it was heavily, heavily used. So that's also several thousands, I guess. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you, my own. Thank you, Alex. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.